How's it going, Vandals? I'm Johnny Alpha, and I'd like to welcome you back to Graphic Vandalism. And you guessed it, it's new video time again. This video is Avatar Press, between the Grindhouse and the Art House. And I have to say, I'm super hyped to do this one, as Avatar Press has just been a wonderful imprint that has warped my brain since the mid-2000s. But they've actually been around a lot longer than that. In this video, I will be looking at five books from them that have completely impressed me and kept me coming back for more. This video is a rad request from my little homie and value member of the graphic vandalism team star hustler the headless biker he even came up with the name for this video he's a helpful little dude like that i was supposed to make this video for him a year ago but work got in the way so here it is now and with that vandals let's just get into it all right and first up we have the extinction parade written by one of the masters of zombie fiction max brooks with moody violent and gory art by rallo kakeris and extinction parade is just a great monster mashup of a post-apocalyptic story chock full of all that wonderful social commentary that sea horror is always so full of and i have to say brooks really worked magic here as usually i'm bored with zombies and vampires but here he made them both fun again and to work to his total advantage and the story for this one is about two vampire sisters just doing what they do but after a zombie outbreak, they decide to live it up. With all the focus on the zombie hordes, they can do whatever they want and feed as they please until they realize they're running out of humans to eat. So they have to try and learn to fight so they can kill the zombies and reclaim their food source. And I just love it. The great morbid dark humor and the fact that the vampires are so spoiled they don't even know how to fight made this comic pure horror gold. If you even have a passing interest in zombie horror, totally check this book out, yo. Cool beans. And now let's keep it cruising to colleagues written by the one and only David Lapham with traumatizing clear as day hand painted art by Jermaine Noble and yeah Caligula is a book about Caligula so yeah this book is pretty nasty and disturbing but in all the best ways possible Lapham goes for broke and tells a truly dark and vile tale about one of the most divisive and twisted people in history and he somewhat reimagines him with some supernatural horror elements and the story for this one is all about a young Roman boy who swears vengeance against Caligula after he and his royal friends pay a late night clockwork orange style visit to the boy's home and butcher everyone the boy is able to make his way to even being one of Caligula's close friends, but the temptations of royal Roman decadence start to rival his feelings of revenge, and I just have to say, wow. This is not the kind of comic you run into every day, and if you're easily offended or grossed out, you may want to skip it, but if you're interested in odd history with a horror twist, I cannot recommend this book highly enough. Right on, and now let's look at The Courtyard, written by the great madman himself, Alan Moore, with stark, gritty, and horrific art by Jason Burroughs. And with The Courtyard, Moore tells one of my all-time favorite Lovecraftian tales that is a bit of an updated adaptation of the Red Hook Horror with a ton of other epic Lovecraft references thrown in. I'm not kidding. This comic is like Ready Player One for Lovecraft fans. Everything gets a shout out. And the story for this one is all about a racist as hell FBI agent on a strange case of linked together murders, all of which are very bizarre and there is no connection between them besides one goth hipster club and the band that plays there. He then meets a man who claims to have information, but the kind of info he has completely changes the structure of reality and gives this comic one of the best messed up endings ever. And I have to say, as a huge fan of HP's, I really love the attention to detail Alan Moore used in this comic and I utterly flipping love this book. And next up is Caliban, written by one Mr. Garth Ennis with lovely claustrophobic sci-fi art by Facundo Pasiro. And with Caliban, Ennis really threw me a curveball here. This comic actually does not feature any of Garth's overtly sexual content or even his usual crude humor. It's just a solid, epic, creepy as hell space horror comic in the vein of Alien or Event Horizon. And I was really taken aback by this one. It was just so eerie and stark, something I'd really love to see Enos do more of. And the story for this one is all about a crew of a spaceship. While making a mundane jump through hyperspace, they accidentally run into an unknown alien craft and the two ships become fused together. As the crew's morale starts to break down, a game of cat and mouse begins to be played between the crew and an ever-evolving species straight out of a nightmare. And I really cannot say enough great things about this book. It's just so moody and atmospheric and it would make a hell of a movie. On the real, you need to check this comic out, yo. Right on! And last but surely not least, we have Black Summer, written by the true god of comics, Warren Ellis, with hyper-kinetic, brutal, amazing art by Juan Jose Rivas. 
cheap. And I'm just going to put this out there. Black Summer is, in my opinion, one of the best and most important comics of the last 25 years. Ellis and Reap take us on a truly terrifying political superhero story that I personally consider to be the Watchmen of the mid-2000s. And the story for this one is all about the U.S. in chaos after a superhero named John Horace assassinates the president and all of his staff. But his actions don't just weigh on him. Now, the other heroes he used to be in a team with are being hunted and they have to try and fight to redeem themselves and to bring Horace to justice. And I just remember being completely and utterly blown away by this book when it first came out. I was already a huge Ellis fanboy, but this book just cemented the crown to his head for me and really helped him become my favorite. This comic is just too good and it's a true pulse-pounding adventure from start to finish that will keep your adrenaline pumped long after you finished it and there you have vandals avatar press between the grindhouse and the art house and i really hope you enjoyed my list and i'd really like to say i'm sorry to my homie star hustler that this video took me so long to do but it's better late than never please let me know what your favorite avatar books are in the comments down below because i love recommendations but for now until next time this is johnny alpha from graphic vandalism saying don't stop reading